All right, so uh, my name is Mark Streisand, and this is FTE 21175555, and uh, this is the 1911 Advanced Armors uh, class. Now, this video is uh, a little after uh, our first real practical assignment with the 1911, that being that I or have already utilized the uh, jig setup on the frame here. This is really for the last um, part of the course where we do a sort of progression of how we unpacked everything and what we saw, I, I'm assuming, or what we found, or maybe what we didn't find. But actually, as you can see, this is a very all-encompassing uh, kit uh, from Stealth Arms. Um, so you do you go you do get the frame, the slide, the jig, and I just went and got the carrier, and um, some pins, um, some drill bits, and here are all the parts that come to help you complete your build. And there's a lot. You Something know, from the book that's a little different than what we get in the actual kit is in the book for putting on um, the tube here, the plunger tube. I'll line it up in there. Uh, the, the book has a clamp with a bolt that you uh, screw down and flare it once it's in the frame. But this is a, something different. This is kind of like a flaring tool that you would put um, in here. And then you have to hammer it down uh, in order to put in the plunger tube. So that's something different. So I'm curious to see how this works. Here's some images of some things that I purchased in order for the build. Some lapping compounds, some uh, cutting oil, some an Indian stone, Arkansas stone, and a spare parts rebuild kit. Here's some pictures of the uh, the jig set up while I was doing the rails. And here's the frame inside. Here is when I had the uh, cutting the uh, barrel cuts in it. And I drilled the sear and the hammer. I uh, chamfered those. And here you can see the fit. And you can again see uh, the work for the, the barrel. You can see the frame and the slide together. And you can see where I'm putting the extractor on. And here I did a little bit of uh, the enlarging of the holes to flare out the uh, tube pins. You can see I can flat them out in there. Uh, here I am putting on the um, magazine release. And there it is all set up. And getting ready to put the uh, sear in. And uh, it actually went in very pretty well. You have to use tweezers to get them in there. And here's the mainspring housing. And next, uh, putting in the uh, thumb safety. That actually went in very easily. It was only a little bit of fitting. All right, so it is together, and um, I did just cock it, and I wanted to show the safety. Safety's on, and trigger will not pull with the beaver tail pushed in, beaver, beaver tail safety pushed in. Right. And then, without putting any pressure on the beaver tail, will not fire. And there is uh, some tension in there, which is nice. Now with the, the Viva tail uh, depressed, safety down, it does fire. Um, it does go into half cock, full cock. And, and I, I'm just gonna show the muzzle here. I hate to point a gun, it's not at me, but it's over my head. Here's the other side. I just have to put the uh, night sights on. 
And here is the finished frame. And here are all the components for the slide just before I put it together. And then I started uh, fitting, getting the slide together. Moved on to the barrel, put in the uh, barrel lug pin. Actually went in pretty easy. And as you can see, it's sitting in there. All right, so what I wanted to do is, um, obviously there's, there's, there's noise in this, but if you hold the grip safety, nothing, no noises, <laughs> nothing. And I even have the magazine in. So it is a tight, um, I'm going to say it's not overly tight, but I think it's um, the perfect fit as far as tightness goes and um, where there's no, and that's probably my wrist uh, <laughs> giving me a little crack. All right, I'm going to put the sights on, a little tape to protect it. Got my brass punch. I'm going to give them a shot. All right, so I do, uh, I did put the sights on. Uh, they're pretty tight going on. Um, I did sand the bottoms of them a little bit, but I'd prefer to have them tight going on than, you know, kind of wobbly. <laughs> um, uh, I put it in, in uh, a vise with plastic um, uh, protectors, but it still kind of put a little bit of a shine where it was gripping there. Um, but I know this is just a bead blasted finish. Um, I thought that I had Duracoat, but I actually had Cerakote, and it was over a year old. And uh, I called Cerakote, and they told me that uh, if it's over a year old, don't use it. Um, the oxidizer um, in it is not good. So I'm going to have to um, get some more Cerakote. And it's the H version, the one that you actually put in the oven and bake. And uh, I had the graphite black, but now after looking at the two-tone here, I may change that up and get um, something similar to how this looks. I, I think uh, I like the way it looks. But anyway, it's all done. Everything's finished. All right, so as a follow-up just to the short video here, and I'll try to make it quick, um, one of the hardest um, steps for me, I think, um, really is doing the rails and doing the barrel seat. You know, there's a lot of um, measuring and taking your time and going slow. Um, and then also, even believe it, believe it or not, drilling the holes, I just didn't want to make them uh, egg-shaped or, or um, not line up with each other. So those were really two um, or three areas, and, and that's probably the build, and that's the frame, the barrel seat, and drilling the, the holes. Very nerve-wracking, actually. And I would definitely build another one. I would love to build a 9mm, um, or one calibered in 9mm, or maybe even a 10mm, uh, even a different size 1911. I think that um, it's quite worth it uh, to build one yourself. You truly, truly uh, will know a 1911 basically inside and out. So do I think that the home building industry is going to be around? I do. I think it will. I think it'll be around for a while. I think that uh, there has been a couple of companies that have actually gone out of business, but overall, I think there's been a couple of new companies. Maybe not so much with the 1911. Well, uh, I think that the big thing right now is the Glock, the polymer uh, lower that you can mill with a Dremel. Uh, also in ARs too. There's always seems to be a new company coming out uh, selling 80% uh, AR lowers. I think that unless uh, some laws change, I think people will want to build their own 80% firearms at home. It's a lot of fun and it's something that you can teach your kids.